We're joined now by Washington Post columnist and blogger Jennifer Rubin. Jennifer, it is so good to have you back here on America's Forum. It's so nice to be here. Now, Jen, let me ask you first about the numbers in this, these latest polls. This is the latest manifestation of a momentum switch that we've seen over the past year. Does this surprise you in any way? It doesn't. I think you're right. It's a continuation of a trend. The American people have, I think, essentially given up on President Obama. They don't like the economy. They don't like Obamacare. They don't like what's happening in the world. And this is a way of registering their complaints. Within that poll, there was an interesting number that 26% of the people who plan on voting see this as a vote against Obama. Only 16% see this as a vote for him. So you have many more people who are going to turn out, who have a lot of intensity to register their disapproval and to stop him from doing more stuff that they don't like. Uh, there's a very practical reason, obviously, which is you don't want Harry Reid and the Senate uh, coming up with uh, a bunch of legislation that is going to be uh, harmful to the country. And there may be, even be some hope that we might actually get something done, like a Keystone Pipeline uh, piece of legislation if you had a Republican Senate and a Republican House. Now, Jennifer, it's, it's always dangerous to take polls from previous election years. However, it is kind of curious to, to go back to 2010 when, huh, well, my name was last on the ballot in a Tea Party Senate challenge in Arizona. Uh, I could feel out uh, amongst conservative groups the momentum building, but a lot of polls at this point in time in 2010 had Republicans and Democrats running essentially even, but of course the GOP had that big year in 2010. Now, as we, we see those numbers from back in 2010 right there, let, let me ask you about this year. The way that USA Today and Pew prefaced their numbers, they said if this trend holds, this can be a gain like 20 years ago in that huge pickup of which I was a part in the 1994 election. Are you willing to go that far in characterizing where things stand right now? I think the numbers are extraordinary. Um, even with the favorable turnout in midterms, usually Republicans trail in these sorts of generic congressional polls just because they're more Democrats. And usually if you get within a point or two, then the party that is not in power uh, has a pretty good shot. They're pretty well situated. Uh, and pretty late in 2010, as you know, Republicans trailed in the generic poll, and yet they went ahead and won it. So yes, I think the numbers right now are tremendous. I would caution our friends on the right, however, that much can go wrong. And particularly at the Senate level, a lot of the elections are going to turn on how good the campaigns are, uh, how good the candidates are, what the uh, challenger is saying, how effectively they are able to chain some of these right, uh, these uh, red state Democrats uh, to President Obama. So elections do matter, campaigns do matter, particularly at the Senate level. Um, I think the House certainly is going to stay where it is, and I think the only question is how many seats uh, do the Republicans pick up in the Senate? I'm becoming rather optimistic, but as I said, I think uh, people should uh, wait and see how these campaigns actually get played out. Well, let's talk more about the Senate, specifically last night's uh, re or the Republican primary yesterday in North Carolina. The result last night, the establishment favorite, Tom Tillis, wins big, a lot of people are saying, okay, that, that means that, that uh, Kay Hagan is basically toast. That now, if, if the Republicans and the conservatives can unite, that's a pickup uh, for Republicans. And we'll, we'll accept that argument for just a second. What I'm interested about is, a, is another thing that happened in North Carolina where the establishment came in uh, found a candidate, recruited a candidate to run against a longtime conservative true maverick in, in Walter B. Jones. Congressman Jones withstands the million dollar plus attack ads and hangs on in the primary. Now, the shoe's on the other foot because the establishment is always saying, gee, if you conservatives of the grassroots and Tea Party would just kind of unite with us, everything's fine. I know politics ain't beanbag gin, but. Uh, does this behavior strike you as a little bit hypocritical to hear the establishment say, hey, we got to unite, but by the way, Tea Party, we're going to get the dough together and knock your teeth out in the primaries if we can? Well, I think 
we do have spirited primaries, and I think those are generally good. If you've got a good candidate who can make his case, there's nothing wrong with a primary. I think what we saw in North Carolina was if you have a good conservative, solid performer, which Tom Tillis was. He's a very conservative guy, as you know. He's voted against uh, continuation of unemployment benefits. He's voted for tax uh, decreases. It's not simply that he's establishment. It's that he's conservative. Uh, if you have people like this and uh, two other, uh, if you will, establishment figures, uh, David Roser and uh, Renee Elmers also won, then those people are going to do well. Um, Jones got substantially less in terms of the vote than those other candidates. He went up with about 55 percent. So he was harmed, but he nevertheless carried through. And I think what this says is you want a good candidate who is solidly conservative, who has ties within the state or within the district. All of those things are important. And when you do, that kind of candidate is for the day. And look, I don't think Jones is uh, in much danger of losing his seat. but. I don't think the fact that there was a primary hurt him in some ways. I think he uh, rose to the occasion. I think it made him a better candidate. That's what and, and we'll have to leave do. it right there, Jen. We're up against the clock. Look forward to having you back. Stay with us. There is more to come on America's Forum.